Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are getting into Explorer and hopefully getting some of you into Explorer. Now, the main reason that I'm going to shill for Explorer a little bit and try to encourage many of you to get into Explorer is because MTG Arena is expensive. Now, the number one complaint I hear about Arena every single day of my life. This is not an exaggeration. This is what happens when you post daily content of Magic Arena and you're known for that. I basically read and see and hear complaints everywhere I go, both in person and online on my videos and comment section every day of my life that uh, Arena is expensive. And that is not incorrect. And what's interesting is that the most expensive way to play Arena is the way that most people actually do play Arena. They play formats like Best of One Standard, and then when the format rotates every single year, usually in September, right now, a month from now, a bunch of the cards that they used are no longer legal. So then they have to buy new cards to continue playing Standard. And probably the most inexpensive way to play a constructed format, a powered format on Arena, is to play an Eternal format. Now, in the past, the only Eternal format that we had for MTG Arena was Historic. And Historic is a risky and expensive format to play because it encompasses any cards that they've printed for Arena. So Wizards can completely print overpowered cards for Alchemy or Historic Anthologies, and then you have to buy those. Decks are consistently becoming obsolete. However, now there is a new option, Explorer. And I honestly believe that if you are playing Arena on a budget after, you know, looking into it a bit for the last few months since Explorer has come out and seeing the way that Explorer has been handled, I, honest I honestly believe that a budget conscious way to play MTG Arena is to craft a good deck for Explorer and then you can always go play it because it's not going to rotate. There are many decks that are incredibly safe for Explorer, and even though most of the time, and I'm sure there'll be comments on this video that, oh my gosh, CGB, this deck has like these mythics that have rotated out. I don't wanna spend like seven mythics and however many rares on this deck. There's going to be a number of channels and there's gonna be a number of people giving advice on Reddits and things like that of how to build more budget decks for any format, if that's what you're looking for. I am not going to tell you to build a budget deck. I am going to tell you to maybe spend money or save up your wild cards for a few months if you're going full free to play and craft a really good deck. If you come in with the right attitude of I'm going to craft this one deck and it's going to be basically powerful and a style I kind of like to play on a non-rotating format like Explorer, if you choose the right deck, you can probably play this deck and grind your way to Mythic, grind out rewards, play events for years. Honestly, let's have a look at this particular deck. This is Mono Red. It is Mono Red. Anybody who follows the channel often knows my interaction and experience with Mono Red. The latest addition to this deck, I mean, I guess we're talking about either Den of the Bugbear or Foundry Street Denizen, which I think was Jumpstart, or these new cards like Kimono Faces Kakazan, I think is like the new from standard card. But a lot of these cards, if you had crafted them two, three years ago, uh, like Robber of the Rich when it came out in Eldrain or Embercleave, you can still be playing them today and winning a ton of games. And a deck like Mono Red, I'm going to say, I think is a very, very low risk profile to get into. I think it's going to be good for a very long time because it's a proactive, powerful deck. And even though I might not always love the playstyle of Mono Red, a lot of people do. So if you're getting into a format like Explorer and you want to craft one good deck that you can then play whenever you're feeling the arena itch for years to come, when Standard gets stale or you just want to swing the sword and beat some people while on the toilet, I don't know, waiting at the train station or the bus stop as they say, but we all know what you're doing. Uh, then uh, this is a good way to do it. This is one of the original toilet decks, you know, get mythic from toilet. It's totally possible. And I, it's very, it's just a powerful, strong deck. It's not going anywhere. The card choices are basically the main list that flows around out there. There's a lot of new cards that you could play in this deck, but most of them are spells. Um, that's what's mainly missing from this and like the burn style strategies. 
What you want to do if you're going to play Embercleave, if Embercleave is your card, is you want to play a ton of creatures. And this deck has exactly that. Creatures almost everywhere in the deck except for one Lightning Streak that I... Lightning Streak? Lightning Strike that I added because I really love those top deck Lightning Strike win the game moments and I just wanted the hope, the potential content play to be in there somewhere. In the mana base, Den of the Bugbear is very good, but enters the battlefield tapped and I haven't powered it up too, too often. So if you need to skimp on these, I understand. Do you need to craft Castle Embrith? You can, I don't think you have to. Those are some places where you can save wild cards because you usually don't use all these lands and Ramanop Ruins is the uncommon one that ends plenty of games. So uh, I think that basically if you're getting into Explorer, the main code is to find a deck and play style that you like, find, really do an honest analysis and decide if it's safe, like a safe craft using some things I'm gonna talk about, and then save up or spend the money, get your deck, and then play it whenever you're feeling like you need a little break out of standard or the draft format isn't doing it and you just wanna smash and kill things. Because Explorer is probably not going to go through the swingy ups and downs of Historic and that is a good thing for the wallet. So I strongly recommend this one. Now, when I say that it is a safe craft, what I mean is I don't think any card in this deck is at risk of getting banned. I just don't see it. Like Embercleave, is that the best card in the deck? It probably won't be banned. Burning Tree Emissary was restricted in Historic once. I don't think it's getting banned. It's very unlikely. And if it does, replace it with Rimrock Knight or some other two drop. It it enables almost free wins, Burning Tree Emissary, but I don't find it an absolute necessity to play the deck. The deck will live without it. If any individual card from this deck gets banned, it will probably still be okay, and I don't even think it's likely to get banned. Compare that to Grease Fang. Now, I don't think Grease Fang is going to get banned, but think about it. They missed the fact that there was a card like Parhelion to reanimate with Grease Fang when they created that card. What if there's another card in the pipeline already that's like a 10 mana 2020 vehicle? They might have to ban Grease Fang. So Grease Fang, while a powerful deck, is a very high risk craft because it does revolve around one card. And if that card gets banned, feels bad, your deck is now obsolete, unplayable. Doesn't mean we won't play Grease Fang for the channel sometime, but this is how you want to anal you want to analyze a deck. Look at the deck, pick out like its three best cards. If one of these gets banned, is the deck dead? No, Mono Red never dies. Today's video is dedicated to Brian Richards. Thank you for joining on Patreon. Shout out starting at just the $4.99 tier. Link in the description. Thank you to all my patrons in this particular video. Brian Richards, it's for you. This is Mono Red. We play Mono Red. Let's explore, explore, dive in. Let the nonsense begin. To fairy avatar, ancient evil. And by that, I mean myself. Let's give it a try. Two cleaves is not ideal, but we do go first. We do have a pair of dens. We do have a firebrand. We'll just top deck a robber of the rich, the perfect two drop, and this is going to be great. The fairy avatar Ugin sleeves no pet. Only the darkest of control mage would have no pet. The most degenerate scum. My, what have I become? Turn one Mikey pirate swing. Hopeful initiate. That's not good. I told you we'd draw this card. I knew it. I knew it all along. Get him. What do you got here? Another land. Another pathway. Two damage for your face. Let's see what the opponent does this turn. Alia's Lieutenant. Gross. So that's going to put a plus one, plus one counter here. But Chain Whirler is going to take out the Lieutenant. So, Burning Tree Emissary is awkward because it doesn't make triple red. We can attack with the robber. If the opponent blocks with the hopeful, I guess we're threatening a two for one, which they probably won't take, but then Chain Whirler can kill both, which is pretty good. Collected company. Well, now they're definitely going to block. Whirl them up. 
You has no humans. Unfortunately, we have to find another rogue to attack with somehow. During any turn you attack with a rogue, you may cast it and spend mana as though it were any color. What's up with all this two toughness stuff? That's cheating. Of course, so would be a, like, a third land would be ex absolute cheating. All right, let's deploy the threats. Stompy stomps. Potential cleave next turn. Opponent, you're gonna need more land. You're gonna need to do something. There's a secluded courtyard. Name human. Now that can make mana for humans. Better be the best three drop of your life. If it's an elite spellbinder, you're gonna be disappointed. Werewolf pack leader. Not what I expected. Thought I was up against a human deck. I mean... So the bodyguard could block here. Maybe I'm just supposed to use the firebrand on the bodyguard. Opponent has that sweet protection effect that they can use. Okay. So this is pretty smart. The opponent can sack here, go over here, but to prevent that, or at least make them take a ton of damage, we're going to put the cleave here. And now if they sacrifice this, you know, so they didn't sack it. That's good. And now this can be damage, and then I can finish the pack leader if I want to. With the opponent at five. Let's just keep them on zero creatures, I guess. And they're out of there. Ah, the glory of Embercleave. Good to be back, I guess. <laughs> Feels kind of weird. All right, we are on the play. If our opponent gives us a target, next turn we can Burning Tree into the Lightning Strike. Once again, two Ember Cleaves in the opener. Two consecutive games in that vein. A lot could go wrong. Lanoir Elves bolt the bird, they say. Okay. Shuffler. Shuffler. Why you be like this? We need to draw another creature next turn. This could all fall apart very fast, even though we're off to a great start. It's like we had a four-card hand. Five-card hand, four-card hand. It's a land. No creature, though. And now one of these will probably die, and that will probably... Man, we'll be in such a hole if they have a removal spell here. Yeah, there's the removal. All right. I mean, this game is... Ooh, it's not good. Opponent's still on two land, though. <laughs> so two straight games where we kept hands with two Embercleaves and our opponents kept hands with two lands. But this one seems to have some removal spells. Or something. Not a land. I think we attack first. I think they're holding a fatal... They're holding something and they don't want to use it on these. Yeah, we want this Annex to survive. There we go. Maybe we didn't. Maybe playing this and getting it removed by Heartless Act would have been better because we'd have the 1-1 one, one, so we could cleave the next turn. Hmm. As it is, though, this is such a bigger threat. When has sword. Trespasser. Okay. This is it, guys. Draw land and we're cleaving. Or we can do that. Um, let's try attacking. Maybe they'll just trade. And then we play another one. Could also just play this and make a whole bunch of 1-1s, one -ones, but I think this is okay. <laughs> Trespasser number two. Let's do it again. Yeah, now they're in trouble. Boundary Street Denizen, huh? Yeah, they know what's up. 
Uh, yeah, this is an attack of sadness. I just don't care if my 1-1s one die, that's all. Uh-huh. Hit him really hard. Down to two. See if the opponent can get out of it. Mauling. Feels greedy for Explorer. But what do I know? Opponent's going in. Hmm. To get to three. So that's removal spell for the Annex, almost certainly. But now we can pump our tokens, so go ahead and remove it. Assassin's Trophy, sure. <laughs> All right, another game in the books. It was looking dicey there, drawing the third cleave, but eventually you'll draw lands and creatures and get out of it. If the opponent can't stop you, they're gonna die. Wow, that's a lot of annex. We're on the draw. Four lander, no one drop, no two drop creature. If our opponent's a control deck, it's just, we do nothing. Now we have no chance if our opponent's a control deck. The one of lightning strike. Every game, man. Let's do it. Mulligan. Okay, we have one drops. One of these can go. Giant killer on one, huh? Ah, look at this hand. Is this going to be another human deck? I'm new to this meta. I don't know how things work. If they somehow miraculously have a 2-3. You monster. Okay, but they attacked with it. Okay, this is tough. I think I need to kill that Luminar Gas Pirate. But I also really want to play this Robber of the Rich. Yeah, just play out the creatures. You have an Ember Cleave in hand. We do need to hit a land pretty bad. General Kudrow. Ha ha! Your top card is mine. Mine, I say. Only humans invited to this party so far. I didn't know we were playing human tribal. Wait, they had another? That's just cheating. Opponents just keep cheating. But, Embercleave next turn. All we gotta do... All we gotta do, guys, is hit this untapped land. Great. Good stuff. I'm showing them the firebrand because I don't want them to block. All right. Collected company. Well, guys, I think the thing that we've learned in our first three games of Explorer is hit your land drops. And it, it seems even faster and more punishing than any other format I can remember. Maybe Brawl is more punishing. Definitely, definitely brutal. That's, so they keep running this. I guess it is a human. Yeah, it is. Wow. What a human build. Oh, the humanity. All right. Um, even with an Ember Cleave on one of these creatures, it won't succeed. Draw your third land, guys. It's not really a fair fight if you don't. All right, on the play, two lands. Uh, one of them entering tapped, which is why I'm really wary of Castle Embrith in this deck, but I think we go for it here because we have so many one drops. Just draw them out next turn, easy. Easy, right? I'll just, let's, do, let's both take damage. I'm an equal opportunity damager. Not a mountain. Mm -hmm. 
Guild gates, though. Ooh, take two. That's a growth spiral. Okay. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I'm going to freaking lose it, guys. Let's uh, send in. All right, Gates. What are you going to do? They have this sweet card called Plaza of Harmony that just for playing it, they gain three life. So that could be something. It's been so long since I played against a Gate deck, though. Good news. They're half dead. Bad news. I need to draw this land. Or it needs to be a two-drop creature with haste or something. Like Robber of the Rich would be fine. There's the Harmony. Add a feeling. What you gonna do? Big old Ram. Okay. Oh, cool. Good draw. Good draw. Vigilance? Yeah, it's attacking next turn no matter what. Alright, I guess we could draw Embercleave next turn. Oh, yay. Omnath Gates. That's cool. Celestis as well. Interesting. All right, guys. It's a little late, but we're going to do a ton of damage this turn. Next turn, Omnath, though. It's going to hurt so much. Too bad I... Oh, I can get one more pip on this. I can do this. Okay. All right. Come at him. You want to block the 5-2? Make sure you survive. Okay. It's a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Not this etching, that etching. Of course. The strategic decision. Here comes Jelly. So can they hit two land drops this turn? Do they have another growth spiral? Do they have a fabled passage? Do they have a gate. They do have a growth spiral. They needed that. This will make mana. Then they can play that Colossus. Yeah, that's really good. They're really conflicted about what to do with this mana. If they have a play in their hand that's better than the Colossus, they should make it. Because they might not see another turn. They should make the best play they can. Forget the value. This game isn't going to be about value. All right, they go with the Colossus. I'm pretty much dead next turn. It all comes down to this. It'll have to do. And I don't think it will. Yeah, we have no amplifier effect. We're just swinging out. They'll keep the Colossus around and it will kill us. Is there any other way? No, there's nothing. There is no hope. I mean, we can hope they goof up. But I don't think I'm even attacking for enough damage. Magic is hard, guys. <laughs> Magic is hard. Yeah, enough's enough. Uh, let him do the Ember Cleave math. It won't matter. It's not enough to kill him. All right, it's been a lot of games since I played a third land on turn three, so I guess even without a one drop, I'm going to keep this. It's double Burning Tree Emissary, so let's roll. And we're up against the classic Yorian. Should I start yelling Embercleave or something? Maybe. Wow, this hand, though. I, I mean, I guess this happens, too. Watery Grave off the top. Can't play those. So, what you got? <laughs> Take two. Love it. 
Annex. Could play this first, and if they kill an attacking creature, I get a 1 1, but I think they're just going to kill the Annex. But even if they do, I get two 1 1s. Mm, I think we attack first. They might want to, like, remove the Annex, then play a Sweeper. Ooh, fatal push. Interesting. They go to 10. Here's the hardened one. So now, even if they growth spiral into languish, we get a board presence. There's growth spiral. What you gonna do? <laughs> Go? Sure. I'm coming at you with everything I have. Thought seas, that'll be fun. Give me a minute. I'm gonna enjoy that. Moment of the sea? Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. Do something, opponent. You're about to die. Heartless act. You got it. I got these babies. Opponent falls to two. What you what you doing over there, buddy? What she's trying to set up. A shark typhoon that cycles for zero. Okay, a few shadows verdicts here. It's an ultimatum deck. So they're hoping to hit the shadows verdict. Then the etching can knock them to one. Taking the verdict, taking one of the verdicts doesn't really do anything. Taking the ultimatum seems safe. I'm just going to take the cultivate. That way they can't cast the ultimatum anytime soon and the rest of their hand is pretty slow. So do they draw the untapped land? They do not. And this one is over. All right, we're on the play with a killer hand. Oh, we're coming after you. Get this dragon out of my way. I'm making plays over here. It's mono red. It's all go, go, go. Faster, faster. Danger, danger. Oi. Rob him. What you got? Speaker of the Heavens. Can't wait to cast that. Okay, so there's some kind of life gain deck. But Cleave can overpower a lot of things. Bishop of Wawangs. Okay. Let's see what they do if we attack here. <laughs> Youthful Valkyrie. Yeah, I'm totally going to play your deck. No blocks. Okay, so they're looking for all the life gain. Interesting choice. We could play out a bunch more creatures, or we could play out a Bone Crusher Giant to hold this Ember Cleave. That seems pretty good. They're probably going to play some very large angel, gain four life next turn. Yeah, you, you'd, you'd be pretty good with a sword. We could play out the two other creatures, but none of them hold a sword very well. Double bishop. I don't know if you're going to have time to play an angel, though. Especially if you're not going to block. I would have to... Hmm. I would have to attack with this if I want to cheapen the cleave. Am I really gaining anything at that point? I'm just going to block and kill it with one of them. I don't think that achieves anything. I have four cards in hand, so let's play this and let's attack. So we can rob them. That's it? That's all you got? Uh, you're dead. <laughs> nice angel deck, bra. Get out. <laughs> Get out. You're no match for Ember Cleave. Ah. Uh. All right, we go first, but we only have one land, so we have to mulligan a hand that, you know, if you just top deck two lands in a row, this hand is so busted. All right. I mean, I haven't been lucky. I haven't been able to draw land all game, all day. We're going to do it. We're going to top deck the untapped land. 
Every land in our deck is untapped from this spot. We're going to draw one of them. Right off the top! <laughs> it only happens against blue-white, you notice? <laughs> or against Yorian-type deck, at least. There you go. There we go. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> Who is this gamer, and why does he draw land? I'm going straight for the Embercleave. I don't care. I'm playing around Jawari and Sensor, so we're doing it. The opponent's going to kill or remove something. Make it the monkey? Nah. I don't want to have to re-equip that next turn. I'm greedy, like I said. Haha! <laughs> right, Sensor. Yeah, what a card. Imagine going second and thinking Sensor can help you against Mono Red. We just turned three Embercleave with a mana to spare, boys and girls, and we didn't have a one drop. <laughs> and that's the game. Top deck lands, can't lose. <laughs> the highs and lows of Mono Red. Dude, that last game, I can tell we flipped the luck. We totally flipped the luck around. We're gonna curve out with awesome cards and threats. Our opponents won't be able to handle it. The rest of this video is just gonna be super positive. Nothing but good feels the whole way. Shackle Geist. Hmm. Okay. Tempting to get a Firebrand down to kill this with the help of the Chain Whirler, but nah, just curve. Don't overthink it. Give them the business. The spirit matchup is Interesting is a way to put it. They got that curious obsession, but that requires them to attack. Den. I mean, I think we're trying to play a chain whirler no matter what. So, I'm not going to play the den. I think we have to try to use our mana. We got five versus five here. Could have played something first to exile with Robber, but I do want to see what they'll do. If I play this, they'll counter Chain Whirler, but I guess we have to force them to use their mana that way. Because if they are just trying to counter things for the rest of the game, they're not going to get in front of our creatures. They have to keep attacking with this to keep the Curious Obsession, and they always do. So it's not like this will ever block. Tap two untrapped spirits to tap target creature you don't control. Interesting. All right, so they have five cards in hand. We now have an Annex, a Chain Whirler, a Firebrand. Let's go land. Let's go Firebrand. And let's attack. We might even hit a Counterspell. Baseless Haven. Take it all. Okay. We just need to force them to keep countering things. If they have to use their mana on counter spells, they can't develop their creatures. If they can't develop their creatures, they probably can't win. Okay, they were able to do both. But they might have played more creatures if we hadn't done that. So, do they keep attacking with this Curious Obsession now? Are they doubling down? They are. Okay, they can win next turn. In Interesting. And they've got all these cards in hand. Even Wanderer. Remember, another spirit enters the battlefield, plus one, plus one. Kind of a trap. And they're at five. So you know they're going to play another creature. If I put this on the stack, though, they're not going to counter it. They're going to play another creature. Then we play another Firebrand that should get them, right? Let's try this. See what they do. Yep. Oh, that's really sucks though if they prevent that damage. Oh, they didn't. They're taking the one damage on the Wanderer. Oh, that's that. They're going to regret that one. Slice and dice. Oh, they can tap something. Oh, clever girl. 
Okay. This, though, I can still kill, and I'm not quite dead. I'm at one. And I've got two blockers. No attacks. Oh my goodness. Do they have another curious obsession? A way, or a lord, a way to sneak one damage. They go in, they drop me to one. What a close game. I mean, I've got this. I can also power up Den. Could be a disaster, though. Let's go in. Let's try it. Can they can they stop all of it? We get a rattle chains. Here comes a haven. Here comes a sailor. And then there's a scoop because they're still going to take two damage from one creature and the ruins finishes the job. What a game. We go first with no one drop, but powerful threes and a two. Keep. And we have three lands, so the odds of us not getting to cast our three drops is very low. <laughs> our opponent would need something ridiculous. Oh man, mono three drops over here. And take a planes off the top of their library. Let's see what happens next. Please play a one toughness creature. Feed the chain whirler. Do it. Angels. I mean, do I am I supposed to just kill that thing immediately? Or am I supposed to get out Annex? I'm not, really not sure. Let's attack first. Taking those planes. There's no way they have more lands, right? Mm. Ah, man. Like, what do I do? If, if I bone crush this and they just play a righteous Valkyrie, I don't even have an attack. They won't block, though. Right? If they have a righteous Valkyrie, they'll at least take the damage. These chain willers aren't that good. I think I've got to get this down. I don't think I can. I, I think I need a big annex hardened in the forge swinging in. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Shock in a land. Savior. Overseer. Okay. Terrifying. But at least the chain will clean something up. And now they have indestructible on that creature this turn. So do we attack with Annex anyway? They'll block it. We'll make a pair of two twos and we'll get two damage in and we'll exile another card. Not worth it. The I think in this matchup you have to draw cleave. Cleave is so important to go over the top of this. This is going to be a collected company it feels like. Oh, wow. Did they see that coming? See Sneaky Reach? A little Life Gainer. Skyclave Apparition. Good card. It feels right to play another Chain Whirler. Let's bluff Ember Cleave and see if they block a Seder here. All right, they don't. Okay, so maybe we don't play a Gabo. Let's see. Maybe it makes more sense to get another Annex back on the battlefield. We'll be so strong next turn when we whirl those chains. At 11 life, the one... I could also draw a Fanatical Firebrand, which would make a big difference. Yeah, let's get... Let's go with the Annex then. 
make them have another apparition or collected company into one. If they had a Coco, I think we would have seen it. Okay, that's not good. Really need an Embercleave, guys. Come on, deck. Okay. That's two life gain, so this doesn't trigger. But they're really close to activating it. One to the top. And attacking in the air. Okay, it's on. So we're probably going to do a Goblin Chain Whirler Bone Crusher Giant type event here. Let's whirl them first so the Annex is hitting harder than ever. Get rid of that little thing. And then we'll slow roll this Giant. Don't know how or if they're going to block that 1-1. One, one. They might be nervous about it. Give him an opportunity to goof up. But the Resplendent Angel does have to die. Hmm. Okay, okay. I'm okay with the trade on the Annex. Looks like they're opting out and they're going with the Resplendent Angel on the Annex. We could save the Annex. Is that worth it? Keeping the Trellisara. Yeah, I guess I'll save Annex. I didn't expect them to make that play, but it looks like they figured out about the Bone Crusher Giant. Pretty good. All right, another life gained. Inspiring Overseer sees another card. They scry to the top. That's really fast, too. Might be a collected company. It's one of the only cards I would put in that position. So this says whenever a creature leaves the battlefield. Come on, Ember Cleave. Where are you, man? Do you believe in the cleave? Another stomp is an interesting draw. They only have one card in hand, so it's really tempting to stomp now and get this Robber of the Rich trigger. Could matter, but I don't think it will. I think it's better to keep it a secret. Everybody in. They are committed to this Trellisara, aren't they? It's good that this is dying first. There's only going to be one life gain trigger. All right. Now I got some critters. Let's send out the giant. It's the only one there that can block, but they're at six, so they can't attack much. Knew it. Oh my. Well, there's the hits you're looking for. I didn't draw my Ember Cleave. They drew their collected company. I didn't draw Torbran either. We get one more shot here. Okay. <laughs> get him. not going to be enough. Uh, we do, however, have this. Because we have first strike. So we get one of the Valks off the board. We reload. It's not over yet. They topple land. Ooh, baby. There we go. This is Mono Red. We play Mono Red. Just play Mono Red. Attack face. Till they're dead. Okay. Ha! Woo! Didn't think we were going to get that one. Torbrin, you know, 
is like a wizard, I guess, and arrives precisely when he means to. If you're Robin, am I Batman? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Keeps! Foundry Street. Let's roll. I forgot you were in my deck. Not gonna lie. It's been a minute. Tapland? Epicure? Cool. Um, Chain Whirler can take that out, so we don't want to trade right now. Let's just rob him. Eighteen. All right. If you cat oven me, and I don't draw Embercleave, I'm gonna be salty. Shambling ghast. Only called Anvil. Oh god. Oh, here we go. They're doing the thing. The good news is, the good news is Chain Whirler, but the Shambling ghast is a real pain. Do we Chain Whirl him now or next turn? Yeah, now. Bye bye, Foundry Street. Never really got to know ya. Oven? No cats. Oh, nothing. I like that. So we can't get down to two cards. Let's just attack first, then Burning Tree into Annex. Mm -hmm. I like you taking two. Can't lie. Sweet. That's a tough setup. They need a meat hook, and even then, we have creatures on the way back. Hegatim's Awakening for Voldaren Epicur. Oh my goodness. I mean, do what you gotta do. They do need to use that anvil to get a 1-1 one -one here, I think. Otherwise, they're not gonna have a blocker if I remove this. They're gonna need that blocker. There you go. And they also still have an oven. I could just remove the blockers. I think that's the play. I target here, and the opponent uses the oven cool, I guess. And then we can bone crush. And we do that second so that they can't sack in response. Big hit. Put him on four. Easy dubs. No cat oven gonna stop me. One win from the rank up. Let's get that rank. Kratzen, I want your rank. I'm on the play. Easy mode. We do have to draw third land, which has been... It's been a rough ride at points today. There there was... Oh, the sound is gone. Oh, we lost sound. Lost sound, you guys. Hold on. Epic final boss music. Activate. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Maybe coming in a little hot. What, what do you think? About there? Should do. Stitcher Supplier. Bane of my existence. But we have a Chain Whirler if we draw land. So, same strategy that we used that didn't work out with the Epicure. Because they played a Shambling Gas. We get a Blood Tithe Harvester. Oh, they're going to block right away. Even though it was holding back the Foundry. Okay. This, is, this must be Grease Fang. And there is a Parhelion in the graveyard. 
and I don't have a way to remove Grease Fang aside from the one Lightning Strike in my deck that I need to draw. Push the robber. Tapped land. Oh, speaking of tapped land. All right, guys. If they just have the Parhelion here on the Grease Fang, it's over. They also need an untapped land. Untapped land, go! All right, Annex, do your worst, do your best, whatever it is. Hit down to 10. They take two. They cast Soren. They're gonna bring back Grease Fang. They're gonna hit with a Parhelion that has lifelink. No! No! Not like this! Soren Vengeful Bloodlord, all attacking creatures gain lifelink. Yeah, GG. Oh. Not like this. Back to 21. Do you believe in the cleave? I've lost my faith in the cleave. Heartbreaking, I know. Well, at least Soren's gonna feel a little bit of my wrath. All right. If we attack with the Annex, we still have Robber. They don't have another Parhelion in the graveyard. Robber can chump for one turn. No! Why? I hate you, Grease Fang. That was our chance. Got a block. But it's over. They're back to 21 again. Wow, I have double sound on. I, it just occurred to me. Did, the, did it come back? It did come back. Like we lost it and it came back. Can't believe that happened. Anyway, that's game. Wait. What am I hearing? Isn't that the Magic Duels music? Why is it playing Magic Duels music? Is this what it does now when the sound messes up? It just starts playing Magic Duels music? I'm so confused. All right, anyway, the rank up will have to wait till the next video. And we are back for the post-game wraps on Mono Red in Explorer, at least the Embercleave version. And we had a good day. We went eight and four. I was on the play nine times and on the draw three. That's basically cheating. And I'm kind of a disgrace just for going eight and four with such outstanding luck. That said, we did miss land drop three several times. So it balanced out somehow, some way. I haven't mastered the true art of mono red, which is to be on the play and hit your first four land drops and drop your Ember Cleave or Torbrand on time. But don't worry, guys, I'm working on it. I haven't given up on myself. There's still hope for me. As for the deck, changes you can make. There's a lot of tweaks you can make to mono red. The biggest thing I would do is take out the one of Lightning Strike that I used mainly as a hopeful content top deck at win game play and add a creature. You can have another Karizev. You can have another Bone Crusher Giant. You can have a Rimrock Knight. There's literally all kinds of things that you can put in here. Just make sure it's like one or two mana playable and you'll be totally fine. The more creatures you have, the more your Ember Cleave is going to come in swinging and that's exactly what you want. So get into Explorer. Find a deck that fits your play style. Save up some money or spend a little bit of money to build a good deck as opposed to always trying to 
complain about, I don't have, can't afford, and you're playing budget decks and you're losing. It's a sad experience. I hate that experience. Only freaks of nature play budget decks and win, and they all are on Reddit telling you you can do it too. But I'm here to tell you, figure out how to get a good deck, a deck you enjoy, and a deck that's safe from bans like Mono Red. And I'll also give you some other options in the upcoming weeks, assuming that this video gets a good amount of thumbs up and likes. So if you like me exploring Explorer, make sure you leave a thumbs up, put a comment for the algorithm, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you know, stuff like that. Get your friends to watch it, whatever you wanna do. Because if people enjoy this series, I'll explore the other decks of Explorer and tell you which ones I think are safe to craft and get into if they fit your play style. So thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again to Brian Richards for being a patron. This video is dedicated to you. You are cool.